I saw the story that independent marketers have promised to make our petrol cheap and make it available, of course I was interested. <laughs> it's not very easy when you buy petrol for about 500 naira for a litre and then stay in the traffic for hours. So who would not be interested? But let's find out how they hope to do this with Mr. Brian Amonu. He's a managing director of Gas Analytics and Solutions, of course a member of IPMAN. Uh, Mr. Amonu, you are very welcome. I've been waiting for this conversation for quite a while. How do you hope to get cheap <laughs> petrol to us? Uh, good morning, Nini. Thank you so much. Um, we are introducing a substitute for petrol called compressed natural gas. And uh, we see that as a more viable, sustainable uh, replacement for subsidized uh, petrol, given that natural gas is more abundant than uh, crude oil in Nigeria. It's 100% domestic. It's better for the environment. It's also better for your car. Vehicles that run on natural gas don't need to change oil as frequently as vehicles that run on petrol and uh, diesel. So we're offering an alternative to petrol and diesel to cushion vehicle owners from the impact of uh, fuel subsidy removal. Yeah, it sounds interesting, but I mean, if, if it was that easy, I'm sure we all have it. We've been flaring gas and wasting it for decades now in the country. And now all our, or most of our uh, generators, cars, they're all uh, suited for petrol, uh, maybe for diesel, for some generators. So it doesn't automatically happen like that. And it kind of seems like there's a risk, you know, if, if you suddenly change, I think they say for generators, you can change the compressor uh, to fit into using gas. What about the consequences? What about the, the, the cost? What about the expertise to maintain it? Sure. Can you hear me, Mr. Amon? No, Did you okay. hear me? I can hear you now, Annie. Okay, all yes, right. Yes, yes, yes. So I, 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 had, I had all you said. Okay, all right. Please mm -hmm. go ahead. Um, so the approach we're taking to uh, deliver CNG is uh, an approach where demand, we, we want to focus on creating a viable market for natural gas, which would justify investment along each value chain so you mentioned that we've been flaring a lot of gas in Nigeria, and we think that the primary reason why gas is being flared is due to lack of a market in Nigeria, right? So to buttress this point, um, Nigeria is building uh, a 6,000 kilometer pipeline to sell gas to Europe because there is uh, a viable market in Europe, whereas the lack of a viable market has resulted in most of our gas being fled. In terms of safety, uh, natural gas has been in use since 2007 in Edo, Benin City, and without any single incident, any single negative incident in terms of uh, explosion or what have you. And uh, the process of converting uh, a diesel uh, truck converting even a petrol generator, keke, bolt, uber vehicle to natural gas is a very mature technology. And in most cases, it takes between two hours to six hours to carry out the conversion. And most of these vehicles that are converted are by fuel. So at the push of a button, you switch from petrol to gas. At the push of a button, you switch from gas to petrol. So this is a very mature technology and almost every country that's subsidized fuel, removed fuel subsidy, in 100% of the cases, pushed their populace to natural gas as the most viable alternative. Okay, so I agree that this is a new, it's a new thing in Nigeria. Um, where are the places, and we do know when things come up like this, the cost will be high. And then the consequences mm. is that the gas now becomes even more expensive, especially because it's already had its own uses before these additional uses. What are your plans to make access to the, to the conversion easy and even the gas itself? Sure. Uh, good question, Inis. So 
we are focused on first creating a market for natural gas and how we are going to do this uh, before the end of the month, we're going to send out pre-qualification surveys, right? And uh, to through the Labour Congress, uh, to the uh, to the mass transit operators, to KK owners, what we're trying to do is we're working with seven local banks and African Development Bank to provide access to loans for the conversion of vehicles. So we want to send out these loans with the terms for the loans, right? And the feedback that we're going to get in terms of vehicle owners that are interested in converting their vehicles will allow us to determine the number of filling stations to build with eight man in each state, will allow us to determine how much gas we need, will allow us to determine how many technicians we need to train to convert these vehicles. So we're focused primarily on creating a market for natural gas by giving vehicle owners, civil servants, KK operators, uh, truck owners access to loans to convert their vehicles. So it sounds like a... And we're going to start that activity before the end of the month. Okay, yeah. but, but it sounds like a long, you know, not short term because it's a whole country of uh, maybe at least 200 million people and the level of understanding mm. and highlight uh, education and enlightenment differs. Um, what are your timelines, you know, that you're keeping for, for this? Can people follow it up and say, okay, from this time to this time, this is available, I should hop on, on the bus and then I'll be at this side and this side. What are your timelines? What's, what's the bigger plan? Sure, thank you, Ni. So again, Natural gas, unlike uh, LPG or petrol or diesel or kerosene, it's uh, difficult to store. Natural gas contracts are usually long-term contracts, 15, 20, 25 years, and these are some of the reasons why natural gas is cheaper than uh, every other fuel out there, right? So planning for natural gas uh, project is critical, right? So before we can give definite timelines uh, regarding the rollout of the infrastructure, which really takes its plug and play. The infrastructure rollout is not the problem, right? The entire infrastructure from uh, a small flare gas uh, uh, processing uh, facility to a small mini LNG to the dispenser can take three months, right? But it's the planning, right? It's the market creation that determines the rollout uh, 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 schedule of the infrastructure. So again, we are focused on first identifying those that are interested in taking these loans from us to convert their vehicles. Based on the number of uh, responses we get, we can now plan, uh, have concrete plans uh, for rollout in it. So everything is driven by the number of vehicle owners that are able to access the loans that we're making available uh, to them. So the infrastructure deployment again can take three to four months. It's all plug and play, right? The primary focus which makes all this work is we are working to provide loans. 200,000 Naira for the KK owner to convert their vehicle, 340,000 Naira for a four cylinder vehicle owner to convert, et cetera. So um, I, I'm glad you mentioned the amount because that was what, part of what I was going to ask you. And the other thing would be, right. um, what, what would be the, the qualification? I'm sure nobody would just come and claim a keke or claim a car and say it's mine and then you give the person the loan. How does it really work? What paperwork and how long will the process take? Um, will you give it to me if I come to you in cash or would it be just in converting uh, the vehicle? That's, that's how the loan comes in. And what's the repayment uh, plan? Okay, Ine. So as you're aware, you can uh, easily get a loan of 200,000, even up to a million without collateral through your bank app today, right? But what we are trying to offer, it's um, we want to spread it out between two to five years, right? By reducing the monthly payment, the savings, 
between uh, the cost of uh, uh, natural gas, which we expect to be between 100 Naira to 150 Naira when we roll it out, and the cost of petrol should be sufficient to pay for the loan without any extra funding coming out of your pocket, right? And then the, the, there are two ways, uh, uh, debt repayment uh, models that we're going to deploy. The first one is a direct deduction from BVN account owners. The second one is that uh, this is going to be mostly for commercial vehicles who we'll add 25 Naira extra to the pump price. So each time the commercial vehicle buys gas from many of our affiliate stations, 25 Naira additional charge will be applied and that will go towards paying off the cost of conversion. Mm. So um, when we come to maintaining it, some of your members, uh, IPMAN members, I believe will now have uh, stations for refilling. Right. Mm. All right, but... Right. Um, so the... Right. Go okay, ahead. So the, one of the advantage... Yeah, one of the advantage of the IPMAN platform is, you know, the, the removal of fuel subsidy is far-reaching, right? And IPMAN has over 30,000 active and inactive stations across the country. So co-locating CNG dispensers on existing Ipman station will result in the lowest capex and the most expedient deployment, right? And why this is important is the removal of uh, fuel subsidy has also affected the availability of uh, uh, security uh, uh, personnel in responding to uh, crime, right? Oftentimes, you know, when you call police to respond to an incident, they tell you they don't have fuel, right? This was before the fuel subsidy removal. So we're also advocating for operational vehicles of security uh, agencies be converted to CNG. And with Ipman in every local government area, that platform is available to provide CNG, not just to the general populace, but also to support security activities in the country. I'm afraid of what this will do to cooking gas. A lot of women will be worried. <laughs> Actually, um, you'll be very glad to know we also have a, a product that we're going to be launching soon that has to do with uh, cooking gas, right? So the gas you cook with is called LPG liquefied petroleum gas, right? We're going to be unveiling a substitute using natural gas. So natural gas, whereas LPG, you pay between 600 to 700 Naira kg. With our natural gas, you'll be paying about 300 to 350 a kg. And the other advantage of natural gas for cooking is, it's not explosive. So LPG is heavier than air. When it leaks, it pulls to the ground where it poses an explosive, explosive hazard, whereas your kid could leave your natural gas oven on by accident. You come there, you strike a match, nothing happens because natural gas is lighter than air. So we have good stuff coming here soon. All right, but I, I hope you're also preparing. Uh, you don't think everything would just go on easily because just before you we spoke to a member of the Modular Refineries, Crude Oil Refineries Association, they will be looking for how people would demand their pro pro products even more. We have um, the giant Dan Gote coming up, uh, supposed to begin producing petrol uh, by next month. So I'm sure you don't think these people will just watch and see you divert their customers to your CNG. <laughs> well, it is a, it's a big market. Nigeria has a really big market, and we've been preparing for this uh, project for over 10 years now, right? And why we chose to pitch our camp uh, with natural gases, what your earlier guests failed to mention is that trying to get funding from Europe or US to build any crude oil refinery is impossible now, right? And also, one of the reasons why he's not getting crude oil for his modular refinery. So most oil and gas field owners borrow money in dollars to develop their fields, right? And as they're borrowing that money, 
the investor or lender is going to make you sign long-term contract to supply someone in Europe or Asia with crude oil, get paid in dollars so you can pay your debts, right? Whereas modular refineries sell in Naira. So you borrow dollar to develop your field. You sell, you, you, that crude oil has long-term contract. Nigeria is not even producing enough uh, crude oil to meet its OPEC quota, right? So funding crude oil is going to be a challenge. Natural gas, on the other hand, is an easier discussion. Converting vehicles to run on natural gas reduces emissions anywhere from 15 to 60%. And in the case of Nigeria, according to PwC, uh, report that 80, 800,000 of our trucks are 40 years old. Most of the vehicles in Nigeria are over 20 years old, which means their emissions profile is horrible. By converting those vehicles to natural gas, we get to enjoy cleaner air. We have a project that is easier for international foreign investors to support. So getting funding for crude oil in this climate is almost impossible, Lini. It's impossible. All right, great marketing line. We'll see the reality in a couple of months. Mr. Brian Amunu, <laughs> the Managing Director of Gas Analytics and Solutions. Thank you for sharing your perspective with us this morning. Thank you so much, Lini. Thank you so much.